We'll call Mr. Alistair Carmichael to move the motion and we'll then call the Minister to respond. There won't be an opportunity for the member in charge to wind up, as is the Convention for 30 minute debates. Order, order, Mr. Alistair Carmichael to move the motion. Thank you very much, Mr. Dowd. And can I say it's a pleasure to serve with you in the chair. And I welcome the Minister to his place and his new role and wish him every success in it. Um, it's worth reflecting, I think, when we talk about a UK space sector, this is something which, when the Minister and I first arrived here as fresh faced and enthusiastic newbies in 2001, the, there, <laughs> I don't think ever was actually. Uh, there was a, uh, there was no such thing. You know, this really is a sector which has emerged at a quite remarkable pace um, and had its roots essentially in the uh, the early days of the coalition government, with the competitions that were set up, then looking for opportunities to develop infrastructure in the UK space sector. Um, from that, it has led through to a UK-wide space strategy um, with a interest in the north of Scotland, in Cornwall, in the Western Isles uh, and other parts of the country. Um, and of course, I think it's worth reflecting that the legacy of that competitive startup has been that there is a sense of competition between the different players in the sector. But that now as we approach a maturity and we are perhaps months from the first vertical launch in the United Kingdom, that a, there's a, new, a different picture emerging and that the success of any one of the different parts of the UK space industry is something that can only be good for all parts. On that point? Of course, yes. Can I congratulate the other government on bringing this forward? And I wholeheartedly agree with the point that he's made, and I'll express the reason why. The Space Technology Exploitation Programme was introduced in Northern Ireland through a pilot scheme in 2023 with the aim to enhance UK space capability by developing the new technologies to overcome technological challenges and unlock new potential opportunities. The pilot scheme concluded last year. So does the honourable gentleman agree that additional funding is necessary for all of the devolved nations, including his own and mine, to support them in contributing towards the rollout of a potential national step programme that can help everybody in this great United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland? The honourable gentleman, I think, anticipates uh, my, my attack later in uh, my remarks, because, of course, we're, we're, talk, we're talking here about support from the UK government uh, for our space sector. But actually, I think the success story that we have seen thus far is one which has been achieved with remarkably little public money put into it, um, and that the support that is required goes beyond the financial, but often to the uh, political and the regulatory. Uh, so, yes, I think he's, he's almost certainly correct in saying that some money will be necessary, but that a, that's, there has to be more to the ask than simply a financial one. The space sector, space sector rather, is widely recognised as an industry with both economic and strategic importance for the UK. I want to focus today mainly on the vertical launch industry, but that's just one part of the sector. And it is an industry in which the UK has a genuine advantage. There are currently only two licensed vertical spaceports in Western Europe. We have Andoya in uh, our neighbours in Norway and Saxofor Space Centre uh, in Shetland. Uh, indeed, with three ready launch pads in Saxofor to Norway's two, for the foreseeable future, the United Kingdom through Shetland will contain 60% of Western Europe's vertical launch capacity. That is a significant opportunity for our economy and for our country as a whole, but it's an opportunity on which we must capitalise in the immediate term. The nation's finances being as they are, it is worth reflecting, as I just said to the Honourable Member for Strangford, that we have got this far without significant uh, or without excessive financial support for the government, um, but what there has been has been exceptionally welcome. Saxford Space Centre is privately held, but recently secured a £10 million convertible loan from the government, allowing the potential 
of government minority stake in the future. That government investment was designed to attract interest and, to, and further investment from the private sector. And in that respect, it has been successful. It has been taken as a vote of confidence for those involved. Saxoford is working closely with DSIT, with the UK Space Agency, and I'm told is in daily dialogue with the Civil Aviation Authority as the industry regulator. We're looking forward to seeing the Secretary of State for Scotland visiting the site in the not too distant future. Parenthetically, at this stage, I would say I would hope that we might see better cooperation between the Scottish Government and the UK Government as we go ahead here. There was, in the early days at least, a bit of a, a sour feeling that was left as a consequence of people in Shetland feeling that other uh, uh, projects were being given a more favourable uh, ride by the Scottish Government. And the expression that was put to me was that the, the thumb was being put on the scales to their favour. I think, though, we have passed that point, and again, in the spirit of positive and forward-looking uh, joint strategy, we need to put these differences behind us, uh, although we don't forget them. Um, there is no shortage of potential clients for Saxford. The demand for a UK site of this sort is clear, but the infrastructure needs to be completed in order to maximise the opportunity. So I hope that the Minister will be alive to the potential cost-benefit of getting this one across the line. More government engagement and assistance is welcome in order to speed up the process and to ensure that Saxifer continues to lead the way in Europe in what, after all, is a highly competitive and fast-moving global industry. Yeah, of course. Uh, I thank the uh, Right Honourable Gentleman for giving way. Um, my own constituency of Murray West and Shah Bay has close links to Shetland when it comes mm -hmm. to uh, space, with the Saxport Space uh, Port Company being headquartered in Granton and Spey. Um, I've also got Orbex uh, with 130 plus employees in Forest who are manufacturing rockets and will soon conduct launches uh, in Sutherland. Um, we know that for these companies, developing launch and manufacturing capability there is a very significant capital expenditure in research and development. Um, does the right on gentleman agree that it's vital that private investment is also underpinned by easily accessible but also importantly repayable state support mm -hmm. and that that needs to be reasonably substantial to get them to that commercial viability point? In essence, yes, I do, and I acknowledge what the Honourable Gentleman says about the sighting of, of uh, Saxoford in uh, Granton and Spey. Pay tribute actually to Frank Strang, who has driven this project from day one. It hasn't always been straightforward. Progress is never linear. But I'm fairly confident in saying that without somebody like Frank Strang driving it, we would Strang, Frank Strang driving it, we would not have got to this point. Um, having developed Saxoford to where it is today, the team are now more or less at the point of readiness in terms of the site itself. All that's needed is a ready launch client which has passed the necessary tests and acquired its own launch licence. Uh, and at this point I think it would re be remiss if I didn't st mention the state of play regarding the tests and potential launches. Saxoford has hosted several successful engine tests over the last few years including High Impulse Latitude and Rocket Factory Augsburg. Um, I, in fact, witnessed one of the uh, High Impulse tests that didn't work. Uh, it didn't work um, in a way that nothing ignited. More recently, we saw a more uh, spectacular uh, test difficulty. I think the term that um, RFA used uh, in relation to that nine engine test in the site was an apparent anomaly um, and uh, there was thereafter um, a, a fairly widely circulated video, uh, uh, circulated not least by RFA themselves, because they make the very fair point and necessary point that this is the purpose of having a test. You know, we don't expect every test to be successful, but from the point of view of RFA themselves and Saxoford as the host Location, uh, I think it is quite significant that they face that difficulty uh, and that everything, all the procedures and all the safeguards that they had in place worked. And as a consequence, there was no uh, injury to, to human life. There was a spectacular 
a clear for, for a few seconds, it has to be said, um, but that the test bed itself, the, the, the rocket launch, remains viable and, and it has been, a, is not been taken out of commission despite the somewhat spectacular nature of that. So, um, yes, it was a test, and this is why we have tests, to find out what goes wrong um, or what can go wrong. Uh, and secondly, all those procedures and the uh, ne necessary infrastructure substances that, uh, that were, were put in place worked. And I think that's something which, rather than diminishing confidence in the future of SAC support, should actually increase it. Uh, RFA is the most advanced of the clients working at SAC support, but they're not the only one. Uh, and I understand that what happened was fully expected at some stage and prepared for. The schedule at which RFA was working has naturally had to be revised, but they're expected to resume testing in Shetland soon. I hoped at the point where I anticipated securing this debate that we'd be looking at a launch perhaps early next month. I think we're probably a little bit further away than that. But one expression that I keep hearing from the people in this sector, sector is space is hard. Um, and I think that even though there is a strong feeling that the final places are all, the pieces are almost in place for launches to begin in earnest soon. And that's where the UK government must play its role and be still more active supporter of the sector as we come into this critical period. I do give credit to the previous government for all their flaws. Uh, they identified the opportunities and engaged with stakeholders regularly. There's plenty of scope for improvement in both the UK's big picture space strategy and the granular element of uh, helping to bring Saxophor to its full potential in the months and years to come. On the big picture level, I would appreciate the Minister's plans to improve on the national strategy and its implementation. He will doubtless be aware of the tempered criticisms from the National Audit Office of the previous approach to the space sector in July. Uh, as they put it, and I uh, quote, the government did well to draw its many different interests and activities in this very diverse sector into a single vision in its 2021 national strategy, which set high ambitions. However, it did not produce the implementation plan that had originally planned to, and three years later, DSIT and UKSA are still in the early stages of identifying and developing the plans and capabilities needed to deliver the strategy's ambitions. If UKSA is able to address these issues and DSIT provides the required clarity of the aims and outcomes of the strategy, then they will be much better placed to secure value for money from the government's multi-billion pound investments in the sector and achieve the government's ambitions for the UK in space. Focusing on the UK vertical launch sector and tax support itself, I would like to hear the Minister reaffirm the government's commitment to supporting the Shetland launch site as further tests and launches go on. The advantage that the UK holds here, there is a clear opportunity to make progress and to capitalise. The only risk is that we may uh, uh, spread ourselves too thinly. I would also appreciate whatever engagement the Minister and officials can make in partnership with the Scottish Government so that we are all singing from the same hymn sheet. It's in all of our interest to ensure that this gets off the ground, pun intended, so that we can start to witness and leverage the benefits to the national economy. Mr Dowd, we have made remarkable progress in a very short period of time in an area which is of enormous strategic significance to the United Kingdom as a whole. It is something that is embraced by the people of my constituency. It has been made possible because we have held thus far a strong political consensus between government opposition and between governments. I would like to hear from the Minister as part of the new government that that consensus remains the case and that is the way in which we will continue to develop support for the UK space sector as we go ahead in the future. Mr Dowd, it's a great delight to see you in your seat, not least because, as I've commented before, you are one of the snappiest dressers in Parliament, and London Fashion Week is fast approaching. Um, so uh, that's not part of my sport, space portfolio, but part of my culture portfolio. Uh, I very much hope we'll see you on the catwalk. Um, um, 
Now, it's, what goes around comes around. It's a funny old world, isn't it? I think the last time I um, addressed uh, from this side of the house a, um, a debate in Westminster Hall was one led by the Honourable Member, um, which was uh, for um, Orkney and Shetland, which was about the death penalty global abolition. And we completely agreed with one another on the 28th of October 2009. And funnily enough, we're going to completely agree with one another today. <laughs> um, I'm slightly nervous about him saying that we should sing from the same hymn sheet, only because I'm an Anglican, uh, not a particularly good Anglican, um, and I have a particular loathing of um, paraphrases um, sung to dirges. So I'm not sure that we can sing exactly from the same hymn sheet, but he makes an extremely good point about we, we as a government are very keen to work with the Scottish government, um, with local authorities and, and obviously the, the commercial players in the field to make sure that we gain all the benefits that there can possibly be from um, space to the UK economy, um, to the way we run our society, the way we run our business, the way we run um, our, our government. It's a particular delight also to see, if I might say, the right honourable member for Wire Forest, because I know he's also um, been interested in this subject. I think he, ha he led the last debate on this subject um, in Westminster Hall. Um, so I know that there's, there's a series of members um, who are interested in this subject, and I hope to make sure that by the end of this parliament, parliament there are even more members who are um, cognizant of the issues and able to drive forward this agenda um, with the government. Because um, there are many things that I think we need to change in this country, but one of the things that we are absolutely committed to, as committed as the previous government, is making sure that we uh, harness and garner the benefits um, and the opportunities that lie in relation to space. I don't think of space as the final frontier. I think of it as the biggest opportunity um, within uh, my portfolio in terms of economic growth, um, in terms of um, our economic advantage in relation to other countries. And, of course, there are, uh, there are other aspects, which, some of which he's referred to, but some of which he hasn't. I will, of course, come on to the specifics of Shetland, uh, though my family is rather more Stornoway than Shetland, of course. Jamie Stone. Um, <clears throat> there is, of course, room for more than one space launch site in the UK, and we wish Saxe Fjord well in their future endeavours. Um, the Minister's talked about the economic benefit to the country, but in, in the southern space launch, that means uh, a social benefit in terms of young people, the jobs of the future in a very fragile and remote part of, of the UK. Simply this as a request. Ministers have a good relationship with the company referred to by my, my colleague here, Orbex, and I would be grateful if that relationship could be built on in the future. I, I have every intention of building on, on all of these relationships as fast as I possibly can. Uh, there are others indeed. I'm going to see Airbus in the next couple of weeks. Um, there are many, uh, there are hundreds of organisations, uh, of companies in the UK that in, uh, are engaged either in, in the various different aspects of the, of the value chain that, that leads to um, sending something up into space or keeping something up into space or say taking something down from space um, or using the data that comes from space um, or providing the, the software or the mission control or whatever. So there, there's, there's a wide range of companies and I do want to engage as fast as I possibly can with as, as many uh, of those companies. Obviously the two that we've referred to already um, are, are, are high on that list. I'd like to make a visit to, to Shetland if I possibly can soon. Um, I know Grand Antoine on Spey very well because I spent a lot of my childhood um, in Aviemore um, and I spoke to Mr Strang uh, last week. Um, we had a very constructive conversation. Um, we're very keen to work with them and I suspect I'll be visiting Grand Town um, as well as Shetland in, in the not too distant future. Incidentally, there are some issues in relation to telecoms um, on mountains in Scotland which I'd also like to um, address. Um, uh, we, it's, the point has already been made in one sense, but uh, space is a strategic priority for this government as it was for the pre previous government. Um, it's also a competitive advantage, we think, for the UK. The point has already been made about vertical takeoff. Um, you know, we have a, 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 a more than half of the uh, availability of, across Europe. Um, and uh, obviously, he, he referred to um, Norway as neighbours. They don't feel so much to be neighbouring in, in the South Wales Valleys, but I understand the point is made. But, but nonetheless, we do want to have a, we, we think we have a unique opportunity because of our geography 
in various different regards and, and where we are in terms of time zones and so on. Um, and so there is an opportunity here for the UK to um, steal a march on, on the rest of Europe, and we're determined, if we can possibly do so, um, to do that. And uh, the Honourable Member also makes a point about um, skills and young people coming into the industry. We've spent quite a lot of time and money from DSIT in trying to make sure that we do have the skills in the UK. We are well served. We need to make sure that that um, is an ongoing um, uh, build-up of people um, available to work in the industry and that, 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 that they're able to get the training and um, support they need and that people from a variety of different backgrounds can conceive of an, um, a, a future career in those industries, even if it's not something that's necessarily on their doorstep. Um, and, uh, and we intend to work on that. Um, of course, this is a commercial domain in, in, um, in large measure, but it, it's not necessarily a cheap or easy um, one, it's already been referred to that space is hard. Um, Long-term investment is obviously far more important than short-term gain. Um, we want to make sure that um, all commercial operators working in this field have an opportunity to seize um, investment opportunities. Um, and we are aware that there will have to be government involvement in that process. Of course, I'm I thought I might have stimulated the Honourable Member. Refer members to my register of, uh, of interest. Um, everything the minister has said so far is absolutely music to my ears, and I'm hoping to carry on with the, being chair of the, of the All Party Space Group, uh, which I was in the last parliament. Um, one of the criticisms, though, we had of the government as the All Party Group was that the space um, strategy was a very good manifesto, but it didn't stack up to being a strategy. And everything he's talked about in terms of the commercialisation of space is really, really important, but it needs detail on that, on that strategy. And uh, the, the Minister won't be able to answer this question immediately, but could he consider, as he gets more involved in his portfolio, to look into more details on the strategy in order to make it more than just a manifesto, but actually something where, where businesses can really get, it, get their teeth into this industry? I think it's a very fair point. And, uh, and I think one of the things all the new ministers arriving in DSIT, we've been very keen to um, do is provide as much strategic clarity about our direction of travel. Perhaps one could say that the advantage of having a, a, a decent majority in Parliament is that one can lay out a strategy for a period of time rather than just um, running to catch up with one's tail. Um, I, and, and I take the point that was made by the, uh, likewise by the member for um, Orkney and Shetland, that it is that clarity of strategic objectives that means, yes, this, was, this is what we're doing, this is, this is not our priority, um, and, and I think that that makes it much easier for outward, uh, inward investment into the UK um, to make secure investments for the long term. I think some of the things that the Chancellor has already said about um, business taxation, that's important as well, um, to create that environment in which people can invest securely, knowing where they're going, and that, they will have, that the government will have their back, and that the strategy is not going to change every six months. Um, I note the points that have been made um, from the National Audit Office. Um, I think the government was very much trying to point in this direction, um, but maybe it didn't quite land it in the, uh, maybe some of the, maybe there was an anomaly at some point uh, in the process of, of developing the, 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 the long-term strategy. Um, I, I think it's also worth pointing out, to, uh, perhaps many honourable members might not initially think of space as being significant to their daily lives as their constituents, but of course, um, SatNav, um, it is a, a, a part of our life um, which uh, we, you know, we all used to have rows in the car trying to work out where we were going. Um, and, and now SatNav does it for us. Uh, though I note that none of the SatNav operators seem to understand how to say the name of my street in Wales or, or frankly, any of the roads in Wales or any of the towns in Wales. Um, but uh, it, it's not just SatNav for personal life. It's also Earth observation, which makes it much easier to, to predict weather patterns and... Um, and uh, I, I, I had an interesting conversation with a, um, a wine operator the other day from the southeast who was saying it's a really important part of them working out when they should actually now harvest the grapes um, to get the right um, amount of sugar in the grapes and so on. Um, similarly, uh, data coming from satellites is going to enable us, both as a government and uh, many different operators, to uh, 
provide services more effectively, more efficiently, cheaper, um, and in a way that is, that is more intuitive for um, ordinary consumers. So in all of those fields, space is a really important part of um, how government needs to do its business and how we need to um, better facilitate uh, a, a strong economy and, and a better society. It's not just DSIT, the Department of Science, Innovation and Technology, of course, that has a very significant interest in, in this. Uh, the Ministry of Defence, I need to pay tribute to them. They, they've been a major player in this field. Um, obviously, uh, it's a NATO operational domain, apart from anything else. Um, but uh, also, um, they've invested more than £6.5 billion, pounds, um, or are investing £6.5 billion pounds over a decade, including £5 billion pounds, uh, for satellite communications through Skynet and £1.5 billion pounds, um, through the defence space portfolio. And there are many other departments that are also engaged in this work, the Department for Business and Trade, the Foreign uh, Commonwealth and Development Office, uh, the Department for uh, Transport, DEFRA, and so on. Um, and the point was made earlier about skills. Um, the UK Space Agency has been funding £19.6 million pounds since 2022 um, in this skills field, because we need to make sure that um, if there are people who are wanting to invest, they're going to do so on the basis of, that we have a skilled uh, workforce in the UK and it's not just available today but that it will be available in 5, 10, 15 and 20 years time. But I might just say a few things about the launch sector which is obviously of, of primary interest to, to, to the Honourable Member. Um, there are roughly 200 companies who are engaged in, in the launch sector in the UK. Um, as I said some of those are involved in rockets uh, we've referred to um, to uh, subsystems, to, uh, spaceports, mission control, um, apps and, uh, and, and all the technology that goes to making um, all of this possible. Um, it's roughly 1,500 people in the UK, fairly well paid as well, so it's a significant part of our, our economy and, and has significant opportunity for growth. Um, it's, it's, it's bringing in something like £336 million last year and a GVA of £153 million. Pounds. Um, and um, over the last six years, the, the government has invested something like £91 million. Pounds. The Honourable Member referred to the loan that's gone to Saxe Award, the £10 million pound loan. Um, we, we, are, we, we are ongoing in our commitment, and our commitment hasn't been shaken by any anomalies that might have been seen on launch. Um, I, I did feel a bit worried that like the first, my first engagement with space was um, something going not entirely to plan, um, but I don't think there's a causal relationship to, uh, there between my arriving in post. Um, uh, in relation to Shetland, he's absolutely right. We do need to work with the devolved um, administration. I'm very keen to have um, conversations with our colleagues in Scotland, my counterparts in Scotland, um, and, and of course with the Scotland office as well. Um, we, we do need to work as a, as a united government um, to be able to uh, achieve what we want in this field. As I say, I've spoken to Frank Strang um, and I'm very keen to, at, at the earliest opportunity, both to visit Granton and Spey and, and Shetland. Um, I can't say when the next attempted launch may be, but, but he's, the, men, the members are absolutely right. It's not a, it's not a, a failure um, to have an event that doesn't go entirely to plan, but where all the contingency plans do click in correctly and properly, so that there was, you know, there was no harm to life, there was, uh, there was no danger to life, um, and uh, we see this not, we see this as a blip, not as, as a, as a as a final problem, and it doesn't undermine our long-term commitment. Um, a, a couple of points have been made about value for money, um, and that uh, it goes to the point about clarity of strategy, because if, if the government, we're, we're going to have a very tough spending uh, review. Um, I think everybody might have go, <laughs> sussed that by now. It, uh, I think the messaging has been strong enough on this subject, um, and that will undoubtedly be true in this field too. So we, we need to be absolutely clear about what we are seeking to achieve and what we want the whole space um, consortium of businesses and um, uh, players in this field want to be able to achieve uh, so that we get really good value for money for the UK economy. But it will be a terrible dereliction, I think, of a, of a significant economic and strategic opportunity for the UK um, if we were um, somehow or other to abandon this field or 
to diminish our commitment. So um, I, I hope the, I have reassured the Honourable Member, just as I reassured him on the 28th of October 2009, uh, when we were both in favour of the abolition of the death penalty everywhere in the world, um, that the UK Government is not stinting in its commitment to space and to the strategic and economic opportunities um, that it affords us. Thank you. <clears throat> On the subject of space, can I say your tie is stellar? Um, <laughs> the question is that this House has considered government support for the space sector. As many as of that opinion say aye. Of the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Order, order. The sitting is suspended until 2.30. Thank you.